Hi there, I am Alimul Karim and in today's session we are going to talk about programming for non-programmers to learn programming from their lifestyle. It's not like we woke up one morning and thought of taking a session for non-programmers. We are analyzing for months to come up with a great recipe for newbies to understand programming out of the box. It turns out some of the programming skills you already know of, but you have no idea that it is programming. So today, we're going to sync those parts with your lifestyle. And in some places, we're going to tell you that how programming can make your life better. I'm going to record this session on behalf of North-South University, which is conducted by Dr. No Nova Ahmed. This session is for non-programmers who haven't done any programming before. If you know how to start a computer, Google and copy-paste, then you are fine for the session. However, uh, some of the topics that we are going to cover will also be helpful for programmers who have just started. And by started, I mean one month or so. Whatever I say in this session, doesn't affect my university reputation. I have a prerequisite for this session. You have to be smart. And by smart, I mean that you Google some of the topics which I do not explain in details. Maybe I give you a keyword and you will search for it. That is smart. And if you can find it, then email me. I will explain it to you. But you should Google first. So that's the prerequisite. So nowadays, programming is like a must-have skill. So why we're doing this? Over the years, I have seen that many people are afraid of programming. They do have interest, but when they try to learn, they have some fear of programming and they stay away from it. And in this whole session, I will try to tell you that programming is not a rocket science. It's really very easy. It's really easier than physics, chemistry, math, and so on. So what are we going to talk about? Are we going to talk about any particular language syntax? No. Are we going to talk about SEM problems? No, we're not. Are we going to talk about developing something? Well, it's yes, but not in today's session. But we are going toward that. We're going to talk about concepts which sync with all popular programming languages and mostly with your life. That's our primary goal. If you were doing programming for months, then some of the concepts will still help you and try to watch the whole video. If you don't understand some of the things, please email me. I will get back to you. From this whole session, if you get 20% of it, it's just fine because some of the concepts I don't want you to understand at once. You should watch the video again and again and then get it. It's just fine. It's like polishing something. The much you polish, the better it shines. We are going to have five sessions of this kind. You will enjoy those sessions online, but join live. It is better where you can ask questions directly and interact with me. So invite your friends and join the group and stay tuned. If you really want to learn, then you need to have some details about the topics. And so we're going to go over the topics in very details rather than escaping some parts. If we escape some parts, then the escape part you have to Google. And sometimes it will take more time to learn than me talking to you directly. So rather than uh, giving you an hint and always suggest you to Google, I'm going to explain many of the things in detail. So this session is going to be very long, but be patient. I will try my best to entertain you. Currently, I am in pursuit of my bachelor's degree at North-South University, which is a great place to learn what you love. Every faculty is very good and very generous. If you really want to get quality education, then I would recommend North-South University. I work for developers organism. We make products for developers, not only for users. We want to do something for the mankind. We have a clear vision and a goal for our future. 
currently we're working on two projects. One is implied tracking system for developers named Developers Connected. And another is Developers Blog, which is an open source ASP.NET blog project and is a community project. So if you like, you can join. You might learn something new. So if you want, you can email us info at developers-organism.com. So learning methods. Nowadays, whatever idea you can think of is already exist or someone is already working on it. So while we're analyzing programming concepts with lifestyle, we thought of it would be better if we could show you programming throughout a game rather than coding. So when I first Google, I find an amazing site, code.org, which had excellent ideas to learn programming throughout some small puzzle games. We would have come up with something like that, but it wouldn't be that cool because they have given so much effort in it. However, in these five sessions, we will try our best to come up with uh, games like those you will find in this session. It wouldn't be exact like that, but it will be similar to that. So without further ado, let's move on to our first top and uh, the link the first link is given here if you want you can uh, go there but we'll go uh, step by step the first thing I would like to point out that math is not programming being good at math doesn't make you a great programmer and the opposite is also true being good at programming doesn't make you a good mathematician certainly there is maths in programming but that's not all of it in our real-world application, we hardly use complex math like sine, cos, theta. Some people love to solve problems in a complex way, but it doesn't have to be that way. To influence you towards simplicity, I have two quotes. One is from Albert Einstein. If you can't explain it to a six-year-old, you don't understand it yourself. Another, software engineers spend their first five years to make things complicated and then next two years to make it simple anonymous somehow I forget the code who told me so if you uh, can find it mail me so logic is equivalent to programming Lo but logic and programming are not equal so let's say I want to buy cookies and one dollar bill can buy three cookies so are those equal no these are not equal these are said to be equivalent so a uh, one dollar bill can give you uh, three cookies it means some of the properties of the cookies in this case the price is similar to the one dollar bill so where some properties match with some other object it means those objects are equivalent but not the same thing Writing a computer program is similar to writing poetry, paragraph, cooking, or driving a car or a bicycle. Certainly, cooking and writing poetry are not similar at all. However, some of the properties of those elements sync up. In cooking, you must know your ingredients before uh, doing the cooking. And same is true for, for programming. You must know what is given. If you don't know what exists in your platform, then you will end up making the same thing, which will be redundant. Advice is to know your tools before using it. If you have an idea in your head, write it down. Because sometime later, you're going to forget it anyway. Trust me on this. I have forget many ideas which come to my head, but I haven't wrote it down, so I forgot it. So try to write it down. Don't trust your memory. And that's how I believe programming is similar to poetry or paragraph writing. Time is the most important topic of all. A lot of newbies I have seen over the years tend to switch platforms and this way they don't learn anything concrete but some basic syntax around every language. So my advice is to stay on a language for two to three years. 
you might ask why that long I should haven't come to this session well if you think through and let me take an example to your life that what you have learned so far if you take an example of maths you have spent your eight or nine years before uh, running into calculus you have spent three to four years on chemistry and if you think about a second language like as uh, English or maybe French you might have spent four to five years on that so if you think about any concept in your life you have spent already uh, more than two years but you haven't noticed it, noticed it or didn't remember it so two to three years may seem long but it's not so stay on a single platform so when you gain confidence over it then switch the platform that simple so anyone can code trust me on this most of the experienced developer will say the same thing analyzing the problem choosing the tools what should be appropriate for the problem will be the most important thing than coding knowing the syntax not everything and it's hardly meant something because you could google the syntax and learn it coding really comes later but newbies who are learning at first time somehow have the idea that coding is really hard but it's not really true so ram this is a very important concept so whatever you run in your computer first loads into the ram which is known as random access memory so if you buy a computer or bought a computer, then you might have heard that a RAM makes your computer faster. Uh, because everything that you load uh, or run, it loads up to the memory. So if you have much memory, it will load faster. That's simple. We are not going to go very deep into it. And what is programming? Wikipedia says programming is a set of instructions. So what does it really mean? A sing you can say a single instruction is the atomic part of programming. You can't go any uh, lower than this, a single instruction. So a single instruction is known as a statement. A statement is like a sentence in a paragraph. By combining multiple statements, you can have a meaningful program like you can have a meaningful paragraph. Whatever you write as a programmer or a developer is known as source code. So your code is source code. That's it. So whatever pro problem you find in your life or programming can be solved by dividing the problem into smaller pieces. So if you Think about a big math problem, how can you solve it? If you really divide it into smaller parts, you will get addition, subtraction, and multiplication. That's it. And if you solve those addition, subtraction, multiplication, you will have the solution. And let's say if you are a medical student, you can think of a cancer. So how the cancer is treated or how the vaccination works. So a small part of the disease put into a human body and that smaller disease is cured by human prevention system and that prevention system then notify the other part of the body that you can resist that problem and that's how they solve that bigger problem or bigger disease but first you're pushing the smaller disease to the body so whatever problem you get in a programming section or in your development life uh, break up to smaller pieces and solve those smaller pieces and then you will have your bigger solution so let's say you have your problems and you divided it and you solved it the smaller problems and you will have your final solution so this is known as divide and conquer this is a concept so here are some pictures uh, I always ask people that do you understand anything from this picture so most of the time they can but most of the time they can't 
and if I see this I can't understand it at all so the concept is you have to see the big picture it's a, a shoe so you have to understand the full picture to solve uh, the full problem if you have a smaller pieces then you don't know how to solve it so make sure you have the full picture so after you have the full picture let's say you are a business guy and I would like to make shoes in a rapid manner so what can I do I separate the parts like as uh, the first part maybe it's not like that in business section it is more uh, more separated and more uh, atomic in the business section but for the simplicity let's say I uh, part my shoes into this part and then this part and then this part so one department makes this part one department makes this part and one department makes this part so when they do all those parts I will have my final result so this is how you can solve a programming problem these are just conceptual layers so if you go to this URL you'll find hundreds of programming language from the beginning of the history so you might ask that isn't there any one programming language well there is which is called a machine language but which is really very hard to understand and which is really very hard to write the code in so we don't write the code in that language so rather than we write the programs in uh, the language that described in this URL so most of the language in this URL are known as high-level language from those hundreds of programming language there are only dozens or so are popular and by popular I mean that they have an open community and they still have uh, current development and new versions are still releasing so that you could uh, find documentation and upgrade your codes and so on so uh, by mean pro popular programming language we meant this C, C++, C Sharp, Java, PHP, Python, Ruby, VB, etc. and whenever I m m say popular programming language I really meant those so programming language like uh, JavaScript, AppleScript, ActionScript, Ruby, Python, uh, PHP, Java, C Sharp, VB, C, C++, etc. and assembly uh, are not really exact machine code or computer doesn't understand any of those so uh, here comes a, a magic or a processing and after that there comes the machine language which is known as machine code or binary so which computer understand so how computer understand this binary uh, in computer there are wires so in one where if the electricity passes computer understand it as one and if there is no electricity then computer understand it as zero so that's how computer understand your program and that's how it displays this uh, PowerPoint presentation and that's how I'm recording this and that's how everything is done so uh, this part of the languages are known as high level and C++ is known as mid-level and this part is known as low level in uh, most concepts you will see that high level things are very hard but in programming high level means it's easy and the low level means it's very hard and the machine uh, language is known as very low level so the lower you go the harder it gets so here is an example and this is not exact code or any high level language but assume that it is so high level languages are very easy to understand so if you see this code you'll uh, understand that if today is holiday then it is doing something called vacation and if it is not a holiday it is doing something with the office so in the low level if it is a program then computer will have something like 0 and 1 something like that and which is really hard to understand you'll see and you understand nothing
and this is not the exact representation but try to assume that that this is so you can understand that how much hard it is to understand so that's why we use high level language so how the high level to low level happens so to understand that we have to take a look at real life so let's say an american guy tries to say something to a chinese guy so let's say in this case the chinese guy doesn't know uh, english so american guy says hi how are you so chinese guy is like uh, what he's saying i don't understand so he can't communicate with the american guy so what happens in real life that uh, the real life interpreter comes in so an uh, interpreter is someone who knows both language in uh, full form so when the american guy says hi how are you so then the interpreter says the same thing in chinese to the chinese guy and then the chinese guy understand it and when the chinese guy says something to the interpreter he interpreted in, in english and say to the american guy so that's how they talk so in programming nothing is different so there are two concepts one is called interpreter and another is called compiler so let's say you uh, write your code so whatever machine you write your code is known as development machine so let's say you write your code and if it is an interpreter you have to give your source code to the production machine that means the client machine that they're using the code or using the program so there is something interpreting or you could assume that there is some magic happening going on and they will uh, get the machine code and in the display it says that I am running that simple so uh, why I'm saying in about interpreter because all the browser uh, like Google Chrome, Opera, Safari, uh, Firefox, IE, all are uh, interpreters and Flash Player and J Java Virtual Machine and so on. Uh, and if your uh, if your program is interpreter based, then you have to give your source code most of the time. But there are different scenarios. You don't have to understand it more than that. You just have to understand the concept. That's it. So what is compiler? Com compiler is similar to uh, interpreter, but there are some differences. So uh, let's say the development machine, you write the code and you compile it. So after the magic or the compilation, you'll have the machine code, which is known as application file or exe file or executable file. So when you give the executable file to the user, it will run directly without any compiler or any source code so it's really very uh, handy but uh, for the compiler if it is made for a single platform like Windows then it won't run on Mac or Linux so sometimes when you compile uh, there is a mid-level code which is known as object code which does not in the exact machine code or zero and one form. So uh, when you have an object code, uh, then an interpreter comes in or a linker comes in and then the linker or, or the um, interpreter runs the code again and give the output uh, to the user. So now we are going to talk about fundamentals of programming or programming 101 so now let's let's take a look at how all the programming languages are sync up so we're going to talk about uh, this concept step by step so let's see so first case sensitivity it's a very important concept so let's say I write hello and then hello and everything uh, is hello but uh, the letters are different as you can see so first this letter which is in smaller uh, case known as uh, lower case so a uh, character which is not in capital form is known as lower case so a character which is in uh, capital form is known as uppercase so when it is mean that case sensitive you have to may match the cases so in this case the H and H match but 
E does not match. So in this case, case if you match with this hello and this hello, this O and this O doesn't match. So these are not equal. And same is true for that. So when it is case sensitive, you have to check all the cases. So most of the programming languages, popular programming languages, are case sensitive. So when they're case sensitive, you have to be sincere about the cases. You cannot write one place in uppercase and one place in a smaller case. You have to be sensitive about it. So some languages are non-case sensitive. So non-case sensitive is, means that all hellos are equal. So we don't check the cases. That's it. So space and new line. In most popular languages, space and new line doesn't matter. But some language it does matter. But we're not going to talk about it. But for simplicity, you, you can remember that space and new lines does not matter in programming. That's simple. So brackets and closing. So let's say we have a parenthesis, which is an opening parenthesis. And if we have an opening parenthesis, we must have to close it with other parentheses. So same is true also for curly brace. If you have a curly brace, then close it. Uh, if you have a square bracket, close it. If you have an angle bracket, close it. So if you have a block of code and middle, if you have other codes and statements, then you also have to close that block of code with your appropriate uh, syntax. Uh, and this is a very important concept for newbies. So I have seen many newbies, they tend to forget the parentheses. When they start one, they forget to uh, give the closing one. They start the curly brace and they uh, forget to end the curly brace. So don't do that. If you ever start any one of those, you have to end it. You have to remember that. It's a very important concept. It's a very easy one, but don't forget it. A variable is a symbolic representation of a value or an object. A variable means that it could hold any type of object or any type of value. That's it. So signing. You could assign a value to a variable. So in most pro pro popular programming languages, uh, equal means signing. So if you say x equals 5, that means you are signing uh, x variable to value of 5. That's simple. But there are some differences, math versus programming, signing. So in maths, uh, if you're doing a math, and if you say 75 equals x, then your teacher or instructor will understand that you're saying that x equals 75. Or maybe you try to say that x equals y, and you are writing y equals x. And maybe you want to say that uh, z equals x or maybe y equals to z, something like that. So when your teacher sees it, if it is a sequential map, they will understand or assume that you are correct, if you are logically correct going through. But for programming, there is only one way. For programming, always left side equals to your right side value. So let me show you what it means. So if I want to write uh, 70, x equals 75, so I cannot write that 75 equals x. I have to write x equals 75. So if I, if I mean that x equals y, I have to write x equals to y. I couldn't go y equals x. It would be a different thing. And if I want to uh, write the last statement, I have to write it like this, that I meant that x equals z and y equals to x. I cannot write whole thing at once. But maybe some programming, because there are hundreds of programming languages, maybe some uh, does accept that, but I don't know of. But in most cases, you have to do like this. That's simple. So let's say you have a variable called pic. You could hold a picture to the variable. And in this case, we have a picture of Java. and uh, sometimes uh, you could have a data type uh, in some programming language. In most programming language, you will have data type. And your data type could be any object. And in this case, we have a custom object called picture. And that could hold a picture. That's it. So you write, first you write the, uh, sorry. So first you write uh, the data type. And then you write the variable name. And then you assign the value to the variable. That's simple. So let's say I have a variable called i, 
which is a data type of int, it means integer, which will not take any fraction of numbers. So I'm assigning it to 500. So that means I, the value of I will be 500. So again, I could change the value of I. I could say I equals 200. And if you take a look, to, a look at previous example, which we've done with the picture, which is same, but we could also change the value of picture would do anything else. We're going to spend a little bit more time on function because function is the key point in every programming language. Uh, for every program, there is a starting point, and most of the time, that starting point is with your uh, main function. So, in most popular programming language, like Java, C, C++, Java, C Sharp, or PV, and so on, uh, you will have a main uh, method or a function, which is your starting point. And from that starting point, you could visit other functions, and again, eventually, you'll come to the main function and end the program. It may sound boring, and if you're listening it for first time, you're going to forget it. Forgetting is fine. Come back again and uh, watch the video. It will be helpful. So, why use functions? Uh, in simple words, functions will make your life easier. So, let's say a coffee maker is a function. A function could have some parameters, could have one or more parameters, or sometimes could have no parameter at all. In this case, we are passing the parameters water, coffee beans, sugar, coffee make or milk. And then maybe there is something crazy happen inside the coffee maker, and then we get our final output, which is coffee. And we're pleased with that. And that's function. A function is like a black box that something happens uh, inside the hidden or the abstract layer and you don't understand and you don't have to understand it at all. And these are some complex examples of functions and uh, these cell phones may look different but under the hood some of the things are really same like the cellular capacity or the keyboard or something like that and which are really uh, maybe uh, manufactured from one machine by giving different parameters. So these are the concepts of functions. So let's take a look at programming, what functions do. So in mo most popular programming, if you see two parentheses, uh, one is opening and one is closing, you you have to understand that it's function. In most cases, in most programming languages, it's function. That's it. And function is a concept that you already know of, but you don't know that it's programming. So in your high school, you have done math functions. And if we take a look at this fx function, where x is the parameter or the variable of the function. And if we pass or replace the x with 2, then all the x inside the function will be changed. And uh, the value for 2 will get 13, the output result. So if we pass 10, we'll get 125. That's simple. So if the parameters is 2, we'll get uh, the outputs for different parameter inputs. So you can see that rest of the in, uh, uh, variables or constants uh, remain intact. So here, uh, square and this two and this five remain constant, but uh, rest of the parameters are changing. So same is also true for fun programming functions. So let's take a look at programming functions. So if you try to make an addition function, so we could write function the function name and in this case we're saying that f is the function and we're taking two parameters x and y and inside we're saying that return x plus y so which will 
addition those x and y and give us the results. So how can we use it? We just say var x uh, equals to f and pass 5 and 3 and it will addition those, add those numbers and give you a result to x. That simple. So that's how you can write a function. So it's JavaScript and uh, you can also use it in ActionScript as well. So some of the functions in other language. So JavaScript, it's really very simple, as we can see. And it's not a good pattern. And we'll see the good patterns in later uh, lessons. Uh, but for now, simplicity, that's how it works. So if you are in C, C++ or Java, uh, you may have a data type. And then the function name. And for each parameter, you will also have a data type. And these data types are going to be replaced with your actual data type. And there is a return data type, data type returns. So it means that whatever data type you given here, the data that passed will be in same data type. So it will be more clear when we get to the functions in uh, real programming. But for now, if you understand it, or if you don't understand it, just uh, go through. It will be just fine. So VV or VV6, you could write like this, but we're not interested in the syntax, so we move on. And writing a function isn't hard, and you should able to write functions. And even though we have talked about that, when you're using a function, you just think that is as black box, that you don't see what is inside going on, and you just use it. But in most cases, you need the specific functions or specific things to do. So you have to write your own functions. And it's not very hard. If you can write a single line of code, you can write a function. And we'll see the function in our later sessions. So why write a function? We talked about it. And now we're going to see some examples of programming in uh, code learn dot code org so let me switch over to the browser so here I'm in the browser learn dot code dot org so here I have tested some of the puzzles because I really liked it so let me start from the stage two or you could visit the URL which is given in the slide hawk slash one that's it Okay, so there will be some uh, videos and examples that how you can do it. And uh, whatever you place in this white section are going to be interpreted as code in the code section. So as you can see that move forward, here move forward is a function. So we're just placing those and it will work uh, just as writing the code. Simple as that. So here, each block takes each forward step. So here, I, to reach that uh, cartoon character, we have to go two steps. So I write uh, two move forward action. So if I run my code, my angry bird will uh, hit that. And if I continue, I will have my next problem. So in this problem, I have to go one, two, three, three step forward. So just put those three. So you're writing three lines of code, three blocks of code. If you just see the code, code is just move forward, move forward, move forward. That's it. So run the code. And puzzle three. So here, as you can see that, I have to go one step forward, one step forward, then I have to go down. So for down, we could use the um, left word because I have seen that from the down, it takes the uh, right toward this. So uh, if it is left, then we will go like this word. So let's see how it uh, works, so I missed it. 
one, two, move, move. So it may be left or right uh, because it's really hard to say. Uh, so let's run the program. Okay, so I did it wrong. So I have to use the right. Okay. So we have to go from here, here to here, and then here, then here. So first we have to move forward, and then uh, we will be here, and then we have to turn right uh, if the icon is right. So uh, left, and then we have to go one step forward, and then we have to go uh, one step left again, and then one step forward again. So if you see the code, we just calling the function. Turn left, move forward, turn left, move forward, something like that. So if I run the code, see that each code is running and you'll see. So I made another mistake, so it should be right. So I messed up with the right and left. So continue. So here I have to first go right because my angry bar is uh, facing toward this TNT box and I shouldn't have hit this so I have to move right which will be maybe this direction and then I have to forward one step and then I have to really make it left again to uh, sh uh, showing this direction and then move uh, forward then we will be here and then forward will be here and then maybe again forward will be here and then we will have to move left and then forward so if you see the code it's just turn right move left and some so on just we're just calling them functions that's it so if you run the code see that the angry bird is moving that's it so we've done the basic functions stuff so let's move on to other uh, concepts in programming let's take an example of this add function so here uh, after the return x plus y we have a semicolon so if you see a semicolon uh, after end of a statement, you have to understand that it's a C-based syntax. So this programming language is somehow following C syntax, but it's not exactly same as C programming language. So this exact syntax or same code will also run exactly same in Java, C, C++, C Sharp and so on but it really doesn't mean that these all languages are identical so same syntax doesn't mean that languages are identical so here as you can also see that I have a curly brace and I have ended with one so you have to be careful with those so now we're going to see some loops and loops are supported in almost all programming languages and mm, some of the common ones are for while which supported in all programming language and for is supported in few programming languages so let me go over this very quick so loops are invented for doing repeated tasks so let's say in real life example you have a school life college life daily job making tea taking classes and again and again you're doing the same thing again and again so if I really say that if you could escape those boring parts of your life after doing once, you are like, hurrah, it's really awesome. But uh, it's not really possible in real life. But you can do it in programming. So let's take an example. So if you remember our coffee uh, example, coffee maker example. So let's say we have our coffee maker and we want 50 cup of coffees. So what we have to do is we have to pass the parameters again and again 50 times and get the coffee. So we pass water, sugar, coffee beans and get a coffee and then again, 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 again. So we're doing it 
and we just get bored and I need a coffee I need 50 cup of coffee right now so you need a loop a loop can change your life so a loop and for now for this uh, topic we're going to talk about for loop which is very important and supported in almost all programming languages so a for loop has mostly two parts one is starting one is condition or expression to stop the loop and another is how to increment or how to decrement or uh, how many steps to take the increment or decrement you can say it so it's something like this you write for and in the first case you write the starting that where to start from and in the middle you write when to stop and at the last you say that how to increment or how to decrement and inside the loop you'll do some stuff stuff will which will be repeated for the condition that you have given and it will increment the times that you have given in the increment section so it will be more clear when we see it in action don't worry about it so we do some uh, uh, work inside the loop and we end the loop so every programming language it the loop syntax might be different so you will use that beginning and ending in syntax for that loop for that specific programming language so for this purpose we could use that uh, starting from one and uh, when the number of the coffee is less than or equal to 50 and increment the step by one because each time we need one coffee but we, if we need 25 of coffee we could increment this condition by uh, increment by two or we could write increment by one here and here we could write that 25 so either way you could have 25 cup of coffee if you change the increments or uh, the conditions to stop so after uh, repeating this loop 50 times the computer or the program will be stopped and you will have 50 cup of coffees without writing 50 lines of code you'll just write one line of code that's it so let's take an example of loops in the website so here I am in the uh, learn code org hawk slash six so here we have a looping problem so we ha we can go to that icon by going one two three four five step by writing the five forward command or calling the uh, forward method in this case so if it is five then run the code it will go to that icon but we have to use uh, but we are not doing it efficiently we're really uh, doing it dummily so how can we do it smartly we could use the loops so in this case we're uh, using the loop since we have to go from one two three four five so we say here repeat five times and just say move forward that's it so if you see the code it's starting from zero here uh, in the slide we started from 1 and they are starting from 0 and that's why they are uh, going from 0 to 4 as you can see that 0 to 4 so 0 to 4 will give you 5 times loop and count plus plus means increment the count by 1 okay and inside the loop we're calling the function that's it so if we run the program Or Angry Bird will look uh, look through and go to that icon. That's it. So continue. So here the problem is uh, it's uh, looking toward this direction. So we have to change the direction by using a right turn right. So if I am good with the right and left, it will work just fine. So how many times I have to go through? One, two, three, four, five. So I have to give the repeat 5 intact. So if I just put the move forward. So if I want to move, let's say, 10 times and write 10. And if we see show code, you can see that it is starting from 0. And it's saying that it stops at 9. 
So we are saying that count is less than 10, which means it will not increment after 9. And count is every time increment by 1. So as you can see that it's very straightforward code. And so far you have all the knowledge to understand this code. So we are doing the code by this game, which is very friendly. And we just run the code. You can see that our angry bird is going to that icon. Okay, so again, we now we have uh, the direction uh, change uh, problem. So we have to change the direction. So we need to have two loops at least. So one, two, three, four. So first one should be four. Four times. So I have to go four times forward. It is in this direction, so it's fine. So again, we have to move left, as you can guess. So if we just put it with this, then we have we're here. So we have to go this, this, one, two, three, four, five. So five is fine. Repeat five times forward. If we see the code, you can see that there are two loops. One loop is running for four times, zero to four, and another is running for five times, so again, zero to five. That simple. So if we run our program, as you can see that when it is running, it's really yellowish. So we're done. So here we have a given loop, so we have to use that loop and solve our problem. So for this problem, we have to come up with a pattern to solve a problem with only this three times loop. We cannot use other loops, but if we want to use other loops, we can, still can, and we are going to do it at first. So how to remove this loop? You cannot remove this loop because it says here that you cannot do uh, remove gray loops or gray things, gray boxes in this white space. So to do this, what I can do is move it left and move it then right. So if you go move left and right three times, it will be in the same place. So if you're going one time left, one time right, you'll be in the same place, but you cannot do with the forward. So if you put forward here we'll have a problem so let's say so f for first thing we have to go one two two steps so forward two steps and then uh, two we have to go one two and then we have to move right so right this one this one so after that, when we arrive, so we need another loop. And this time we have to go one, two, two times. This one. So again, we have to move uh, right maybe. So right, and then we have to go uh, one, two times. So two, so forward. So if we run our program, So it will be in the same place, so the loops are removed, and we'll have our exact result that we want, but it is not really efficient. So now we're going to uh, we'll do try, now we try to have the pattern. So if we have a pro programming problem like that, so where you have to find a pattern, you have to spend some little bit more time to find the pattern. So here, if you see that first, uh, condition that you have to fulfill, which is uh, forward, forward, and then you have to move it in this direction. For this direction, you have to go at least uh, right once. So let's really do the first things first, because you at least have to go in this direction. Otherwise, it won't work. So if you just put one forward and one left so it will go to this direction and move to right and try to go this direction it will fail so you at least have to have two forwards and one right 
for the first condition. And if you go through for the second condition, so when the loop runs again, so when it runs again, it will come to here again, and then here, and again move to right, which will be in this place, and it will again go to two steps forward. So it will be done, and we will have we have here four by four four blocks. So if you just see the code, it's very simple. It's running three times, and inside we have these three functions calling. That's it. So if you run the code now, we have our solution. That's it. So anyway, in programming, you could solve a problem in many different ways. So this is called repeat until block. So in previous problem, we have given the numbers. But here, we don't have to give any numbers. It's like a while loop. And we'll see it uh, in this section. So let me go over to the slides. So here I am. So you could also, uh, here is a syntax for a single loop. If you are running the loop for 51 times, it will run for 51 times since we are starting from 0 and running for 50. So uh, 1 to 50 is 50 times. So since we are starting from 0, so it will be 51 times. So this is really wrong. It should be 51. It should be 51. 51 and for incrementing we're saying that I plus plus so I plus plus actually means that I equals to I plus 1 that's it so whatever value I has I will be increment by 1 that's mean by I plus plus so as you can see that we have a uh, semicolon at the end of the syntax uh, statement so that means it's C base and it's actually compatible with C, C++, Java or C sharp. So you have to be careful with those parentheses so if you really miss those parentheses your program will not run. So inside the conditions uh, in the first uh, pseudocode we have seen with the commas but in actual code like PHP, C Sharp, or C++, you have to use semicolon. Okay, so here we are decrementing. Minus minus means decrementing. Whatever value it has, it will be decremented by 1. So I minus minus means I equals to I minus 1. That's it. Starting, ending, starting, condition, and decrementing. So that's it. So in JavaScript, you could also write like this, or in previous programs, you could also write like this. Both are same thing. So we have seen the examples of loop. So let's see the example of while. So while means you have to give a condition here. So whatever condition you give, if it is true, then the while uh, loop will run. So when the condition is false, the while loop or the statements inside the while loop will not run. So if the condition is true, it will run. So we also have a do while loop in many programming language. We really don't use it most of the time, but it's sometimes it is efficient to use it. So do while is a different concept. It, uh, to explain it, I really assume that the image will do a very good job. So uh, do while does it, whatever you give inside the code, it's really right like this. So you write do and use the curly brace and write some syntax inside. And at the end, you will write while. And inside the while, there will be a condition. So whatever you write in the condition, it will run at once. So as you can see that in, we are going once. But if the condition is true, then we are going back again to the loop block. So this is the block. So if the condition in while is true later, we'll come to the block. But if it is not true, then uh, we'll just go out. But uh, do while and while difference is do while will always run at once, but while will only run if you have the condition true. That's it. 
So let's take an example of while loops uh, in the web. So as you can see, here is a while loop which says not finished. So until it's finished, and it, until it meets its condition, so not finished. So it means that it's true. It's not finished. And then whatever you write inside, it will run. So if we just say forward, so since it is in the same direction with this icon, so if we just go to the code, so that means that if it is not finished, do whatever inside the uh, curly braces. So in the curly braces, we're saying that move forward. So move forward until it's finished. That's it. So if we run our code, Okay, that's it. So again, take it. So we just call move forward. It will go forward and again forward. Again, then we have to move uh, forward and then we have to move left. So it's really like the previous problem we solved with the uh, for loop, but here we are doing it at uh, with while loop and every while loop can be translated into for loop and every for loop can be translated into while loop. So it's just the developer's preferences but most of the time we only use the for loop. So if you understand the for loop that's it. You don't have to uh, really go through while loop as well but it is also uh, widely used so you can take a look but if you understand for loop it's fine for you right now. So again, we have a while loop and we have a zombie here and uh, from if you want to go from the uh, downside to upside, you have to understand that uh, these are the lefts. These angles are the lefts. So first I have to go forward for this step because it's in this direction. Again, I have to move uh, left. So left and then I have to go again uh, forward forward and then again I have to go in this direction so which is going to be uh, the left again so this is left and this should be also this is left so left this should be right maybe so let's see okay so yeah it's fine so uh, after giving the loop um, we just sit back and watch the zombie to eat the flower that simple so again we have a same type of problem so uh, here we are just saying forward uh, oh, sorry, we can say forward because it's in uh, it's looking in this direction. So there is a flower which could eat my zombie. So I have to go in this direction. So I have to go uh, left. And these uh, left and rights are really very tricky. From these directions to go uh, to left is really in this direction. So you'll be confused with this left and right, but don't be just change the left and right if you uh, see that you are not doing it right and again after that we have to go in uh, this uh, right direction maybe so let's give it a try right direction and then we have to move again to uh, this forward so forward and run the program so we did it wrong so it's really very easy uh, so whatever we choose left is going to be right, right is going to be left. So that's it. That's it. So here we have a if block uh, which is a condition. So we're not 
done yet with the conditions. So let's see the conditions in our slides. So conditions, which is also supported by every programming language. So if else are common and some programming language have switch and some have select, but they do they both do the same thing and some really don't have switch or else, uh, switch, switch or select. So if or else is common in all programming language, but we are going to see all of those in very short time. So let's take a scenario example or real life example that your boss says that you should take the deal if they offer five million or more in cash. So if they don't, don't take the deal. That simple. So if they do, then take the deal. That simple. So you take the deal. So that's how the conditions are applied in real life and uh, in programming it's not that different. You just write the if and then you write the condition or the expression and then uh, whatever you write in the condition it's evaluated to true or false and in programming whenever a thing is converted to uh, true or false we say it a boolean. Boolean means a value should be true or false. So it's a data type. It's common in most programming language. So let's take some example of conditions. So let's say you say that 6 is greater than 5. You're saying that. So whenever you say that, it's really evaluated to true or false. In this case, it will be true. So again, whatever you say will be compared again with computers true or false, so whatever you say is going to be again checked that if it is true, then the uh, if conditions or if statement inside the statements uh, of loop will be wrong. So let's take another example. So x is greater than 5. So if that is true or false, so if x has a value of 9, then this condition will be false and it will be compared with again true. So false, if the false is compared with the true, it will be uh, returned false. So if true is compared is with true, it will return true. So if it is x is 9, it will return false. So if it is uh, 11, say, uh, the whole thing in the condition will return true or your uh, if condition will run. That simple. So if you have x is greater than, you could say like that uh, in maths, you just say uh, uh, greater than and in, uh, in the below you just give the equal sign, but in most programming language you use first greater than and then equal. Equal sign will always be in the right side. So if you want to say greater than equal, you put the greater than sign and then say equal. So if you want to say less than equal, you put the less than sign and then say equal. So it's like this. So these are known as relational operators. Uh, greater than, less than, less than equal, greater than equal, something like that. So it will be evaluated uh, as previous and if it is true, then the condition will be run. So you could also say uh, like this that x uh, like this uh, that uh, in both ways like 10 is greater than x so it's actually this previous condition we just write in uh, this form and it's also acceptable in conditions and if it is true then your code will run that simple so let's say you say that now 10 is greater than x which is equals to true so uh, you're saying this the whole part and your computer will then evaluate the whole part as true or false so it first what it will do is it will uh, evaluate this part if this part is true true then uh, it will compare with your true and Finally, it will also compare with computer uh, conditions true. So, actually, you can say equals true, but computer will always do it for you. So you don't have to say that 
uh, 10 is greater than uh, equal x which is equals to we don't have to say that because it will be also done implicitly by computer so you can say that but it is not necessary so that was an example so we could also write like and so and means that when both part are true so it means that we're saying that when x is greater than or equals to 10 and less than and equals to 20 so we are giving a boundary to the x so x number must be in uh, 10 and 20 so you could say 15 and the condition will be true if you say 25 the condition will be false so as simple as it so it will evaluate both of the part and then join those both part and compare those if both are true then your condition will be evaluated that simple so when you use and it means all of those have to be true you can use another and to join another condition as well you could write another condition so which will be eventually evaluated to true or false and you could also write like or so or so when you say or it means this one true or this one's true so any one of those are true the condition will be evaluated but in the previous case uh, we have to also go through uh, let's say uh, 10 and 20 but in this case if the number uh, maybe we cannot give an example but or means that if any of the part is true the condition will be true that simple if any of the condition is true the whole condition will be true that simple so if part means that if the condition is true whatever I'm showing in previous so whatever you write is actually evaluated to true uh, or false so if it is true then whatever you write inside the if block will run so whatever statements you write will run so for every if statement in every programming language there is a uh, int condition uh, syntax so you have to find it for C it's really the curly brace that's it but uh, like VB it is in if but we're not interested in the syntax you could search the syntax and learn it it's really very easy but the uh, concept is different uh, concept is main thing here so if you don't understand how and or or works you will be in trouble so you could also use else part else part means that uh, if this part is not true then this part will be executed so whatever you write this part will be executed so you could have multiple lines of else uh, if else if and else so else if means if this condition is uh, it's if previous condition is not true then if this condition is true then this code will execute it so and again if else if means if that previous condition is not true then this one will be executed if this one is true and else part means that if none of those are true then else part will also will execute it uh, at any point so else means default so if none of the above is happened so else part will uh, execute it so if any of those happen then that will be executed so if means that the conditions will if you have a if block like this that if uh, condition else if condition so if you have a block like this the concept is the uh, compiler or your program uh, uh, machine code or interpreter will go once through the loop so if you have uh, any of the conditions true it will not run the other conditions only one condition will run from a if block so if you have this type of multiple blocks only one of those will be run so if else part is run the others will not run so if this part is run the others will not run so if you have multiple of if so as let's say I have a if condition here and then uh, I have in if here and then again I write if here so it means if this condition is true then this will be executed and if this condition is true this will be executed and both could be executed if both condition are true both could be executed but in this case if this condition is true and this condition is true they both will not run only one of those will run 
which comes first will run and the rest will not run. So this is the concept. And everything you write inside uh, if block is known as block of code. So you could have nested loops. You could have nested complex, sorry, you could have nested complex conditions with if. So as you can see that we have a first if, then inside second if, third if, fourth if. So inside the fourth if we have some conditions and statements. So if that fourth condition is true, this one will be executed or else this will be executed. And if none of those, uh, so, sorry, so after that if fourth if block, whatever codes inside the third condition, so third condition uh, will run here. And if the third condition is false, then these codes will be run. So if the third condition is false, uh, the fourth if will never run. So this is the concept. So you have to end all the ifs. So if you don't end, uh, you will have a bug in your program. So it will be a compilation error, known as compilation error. So let's see some of those in our web. I'm here in the uh, learn.code.org slash talk slash 14 example, which we were previously. Uh, and uh, the query boxes are bound to be solved as it is, you cannot change it or uh, you cannot remove it. So uh, as you can see that here are multiple blocks of code. So here is a nesting codes, as you can see that if nested in the slide. So if we see the code, as you can see that here is a while loop and inside we have a function and inside we have a if a statement. So if a statement is currently saying that if a path is left, then do something. So inside something we have nothing. So uh, first we have to check that if we don't have a forward, we cannot move. So we have to place the forward. And then, it's, uh, sorry, so forward is already given here. So if the path is left, as you can say that there is a left, if there is a left, then go left, that simple. So if you see the code again, so if the path is left, then go left, turn left, and you have to move forward. So, so it will forward, but when it is uh, have a path to left, just turn left. That's simple. So if we run our program, as you can see that it's always checking that if it is it has a path to left. So if it it doesn't, it just go forward. That's it. Okay, so here we have another problem. So here we have to move forward at least. So repeat until you have to put it. So uh, forward first, go forward. So here we could use a if statement. So if there is a right turn, so assume that this is a right. If it is not right, then we will change it. So if it is right, then go right. That's simple. So go forward. If there is a right, go right. And if there is a right, go right. That's simple. So let's run our code. Yes, it's always checking the right as you can see that it's always checking the right. And if there is no right, it just goes. So we can solve the problem in a different way. So if we just go to our previous problem, we could solve our problem uh, differently. So uh, we could do like this. If there is a for, uh, forward ahead means if there is a forward, then go forward. So if there is no forward, then um, check again. So if there is no forward, right, uh, check, uh, go, go right, sorry, so go right will also work, but it will take some more lines of code. So if you see the code, uh, if there is a forward path, then take the forward path. If there is a right path, then take the right path. That's it. So if we run the code, we'll have also exact 
uh, result, but this time we're checking in both directions. So it's really costly, but uh, it's also more logical. So we move on to the next problem. So here uh, you can also solve it as previously. So we could use our for, uh, if condition, and if there is a ahead of path, then move forward. So if there is a left path, then go left. That's simple. So if you run our code, you'll check both directions. As you can see, that both direction it's checking all the time. So if there is a path to forward, it takes it. So if there is a path to left, it takes it. That simple. So we could minimize it to uh, two blo four blocks of code by doing uh, our first example. We have to go forward. So we're going forward. So if we have a path to left, then we are taking left. That's it. So if we run our code again, see that it's always checking the left this time only, but not checking the forward. It's just going forward. So if there is a left, take the left. That's it. So if you see the previous code, previous code, so put there. See the code? That's straightforward. So move forward, if left, turn left. That's it. So here I have to again use the previous example. Move forward. If there is any right maybe, yeah. Mm, take the right. That's it. But you could solve this type of problem uh, any way that you want. So as I've said in the first topics that programming is actually logic and in these problems, you are actually using your logic to solve the problem. So here we have also if else block. So as you have seen in the slides, that if else means if the first part is not true, the else part will run. So if we just use inside a for loop, so I'm I'm going to go over uh, as dumbly as possible. So if we have a forward path, take it. If we don't have a forward path use the left. Okay, so you see the code. Uh, if there is a forward path, take it. Else, take left, right, left. So if it is not a forward path, then always take left. So if we run it, uh, since you can see that there is also a left path, but since it is taking the forward path, the left part is not running. So on an if block, one condition will run, but if you have multiple of if blocks, multiple of if blocks, then uh, both of them could run. But in a if else block, only one of those will run. This is very important. So here we could solve it like uh, previously, move forward. So if we have a problem, we could go right yeah if we don't have a forward then go right that's it yeah simple so this one is very good example uh, of uh, nested nested uh, coding so as you can see that you could nest as much as you want. So you could have a loop inside you could have an if else loop and inside that if else you could have another if else. Inside that if else you could have another and inside you could have another and inside you could also have a for loop and inside that for loop you could also have a if else and inside that if else you could also have a for loop. So you could nest as much as you want. There is no problem with it. So if we see the code, you can see that 
you have nested so many times. So it's just simple. So whatever you nest, you must close it with your closing condition. So in this case, the curly brace is our closing syntax. So we're going to remove it. So if we have a head, take a head. If we have a right, take the right. If we don't have a right, take the left. That's it. So you see the code. So if we have our path, we go forward. Else, if there is a right path, go right. If it's a, a not a right path, then go left. That's it. Around the program. As you can see that when there is a forward path, it's just taking it. And when it is running, the, it's, the color is becoming yellow. By this logic, you can also program a robot to go to any direction that it wants. So simple. So we're done with uh, 20 problems, the first 20 problems, basic ones. And we're done from the done, done for the slide. And let me go over to the slide again. So now we're going to go over the switch or select a statement. So some program language it's called switch, some it's called select case or switch case. So what happens is you give a value of an object and each time you write case and then write the condition for that and the condition is always going to be equal condition in the if you have seen that you could write less than less than equal uh, something like that but here in switch condition you always have one one choice which is the equal condition so whatever you write so if it is x if you write 5 that means x is checking with if it is 5 or not so if it is 5 this codes that you write inside will run so some programming language needs a break statement which means that after doing these things, break from the switch and some programming language doesn't need the break uh, statement like BB, but all the others like uh, C Sharp, PHP, uh, JavaScript all need the break statements. So we could have multiple cases and it's really cleaner than if a statement. So, so when you are checking uh, one variable with multiple cases switch is better than if but when you have multiple conditions with multiple variables if is always the better one so uh, some programming language also have a default case so in the default case if none of the above is happen then the default case will run so uh, in some programming language like C, C++, Java or PHP or JavaScript could run uh, all the uh, case statements if we don't break things up. So if you don't use the break statement in C, what will happen is uh, if this condition is true, it will run after that. So this will also run if you don't use the break statement. So remember that. It's a very important concept. So let me take a look at numbers. So if we pass the x as a variable, so we are comparing uh, x with the 5. We are saying x equals 5. So if x equals 5, then these things will happen. And uh, if it is a, a C-based language, uh, if it requires a break, then break it. Or else, if it is equal to 5, it will also run the, these statements as well. So you will be confused. So use the break if you have a break statement or uh, if your uh, switch case requires a break statement. So naming convention. So I have seen in many beginners and I have did it when I learned the programming that try to name all the variables with x, y, z and something like that. With the uh, single, single character or in the shortest way possible but don't do that try to name your variables appropriately there are some naming conventions for uh, the specific language that you are coding in 
scope or blocks means uh, it represents a variable life cycle. So uh, in previous sections you have seen uh, variables. So uh, life cycle means that when a variable is going to be expired or when a variable doesn't work anymore. So it's also known as life cycle concept. And if you can find out the blocks in most programming language, a uh, variable is uh, live inside one block of code. So if you go from one block to another, the variable is expired. So will not, or you can say that it is not available in that uh, life cycle. So uh, here is an if statement. So as you can see that I have boxed out. So each of the boxes are the blocks of code. So whatever variable you declare inside those boxes will be stay inside those boxes. So you cannot call that variable outside of that box. So you have to understand that concept. It's very simple, but if you don't understand, email me. I'll give you more examples of it. So it's a video, so you can go back and see the blocks again. So here I have two functions. One is do, another is do to, and uh, the, uh, the third function is function. So the third function takes two parameters. One is param1 and param2. So uh, from this do function, I am calling the, this function. This function is called from this do function. So let me introduce some variables. So let's uh, say that these are the block of codes uh, since I'm uh, decorating with the box, but uh, it's mostly true for all the programming language you are going to encounter. So it's very important concept. If you understand this, most beginners suffer for this months. So it's a very important concept. If you understand this, 70% uh, of the programming is done. So let's say we introduce a variable or declare a variable x as int, int our data type, x and z, two variables. So uh, x is 50, z is 20, and in this function, we are also going to declare uh, x equals to 20 and y equals to 30. And I have pointed out this x and this x because these two x does not, does, does not make any sense. These two x's are two different things. It's like it's in Bangladesh and it's in India. So in two different countries. So they don't mean the same thing. So if you're confused with it, uh, it's possible that uh, someone haven't explained to you. So if you understand it, 70% of the programming will be done. So again, uh, if I declare a z y here, y equals to 200, since I haven't declared any y here, but since we're calling uh, the function uh, function which is this but it also have y but as you can see that it's inside a block so a variable will be remain available inside a block so it is available inside that block so if you replace that block total block here a function means that it should be replaced or uh, do the works in here so if you replace the box will be stayed here. So still, this y and this y will not be same. And in this case, you haven't declared the y. So in most programming language, you will get a compilation error. So here, I have a z. z equals to 300. Uh, since we are in the same block, if you mm, think, but still, since we are calling a function, again, function inside a function will create new blocks. This is another concept that I haven't told. So uh, this z and this z will not be declared. Uh, so there is no z declared because it's a separate block and this is a separate block. Even though that uh, function is call, calling from uh, this block, but it will make a different sense. So z will not be declared here so you will ha again have a compilation 
here. So let's say we have two functions again and this time we have a parameter called int x. So if we again declare x equals to 50 and this x and this x are also different things. You could also pass this x here but again when you pass it's really copied but this x and this x are two different things. Uh, it's simple as that. If you are suffering again mail me I will give you more details but for simplicity understand that these are x and these x are two different things and the z will have a compilation error which came from the previous slide mistakenly so uh, let's say we have a for loop block and uh, the for loop the entire for loop is actually a block of code so whatever you write uh, so it, this switch also a block of code so no, no matter how many cases you have so whatever variable you declare, declare will be available inside that uh, switch statement. So this if also a block of code so whatever variables you declare will be in, uh, available inside this block. So this x will be available in this entire block of code. So let's say if I want to declare again x, I will have a compilation error because x is already declared inside that block. So if, if we try to change the variable x, it will be correct. If I try, try to uh, declare a variable called new var and give a value 10, let's say, and if I try to change the variable inside that block of code, I can because it's nested inside and if, if I try to change the x from this outside block, I can, but if I try to change the new var, since new var is available inside this block, so it will not be available outside, so we'll have a compilation error. So if you understand this concept, 70% of the programming is done. Newbies suffer for these months. So nesting, we already have seen nesting, so nesting is possible at any depth as you want. So it could have a function and inside a function it could have it could do something with statements or call a function and, and inside that it could also have a loop. Inside that you could have some statements or it could have another loop inside the loop and then you could have another if condition or call another function and so on. So assume that these all are closed or uh, end but here we will not have this space so I haven't shown it but you have to end all of the uh, while loops, if loops and for loops and uh, the last if condition. If you don't you will have a syntax problem. So data types. Uh, we're going to talk about common data types across all programming languages. So numbers, there are a few types of numbers. One is called bit. Uh, bit is also known as the boolean which also represent the 0 and 1 which we have seen in first the machine code. So machine codes are actually represent with the bit and we have byte. Byte is actually uh, the combination of bit. So one byte means you have 8 bit characters, uh, 8 bit numbers uh, and integers uh, are INT represents integers. You cannot have a fraction of numbers in, in integer data type and it could have long. Long means the big integers. It could have uh, more or double than what can an integer hold and you will have float. Float has the uh, data limit as integer but it could also hold fraction numbers or decimal numbers and you have uh, you can also have a data type called double which is bigger than float and another data type called decimal which is bigger than double data type so which is also decimal. So you can have uh, this type of uh, data types in uh, uh, almost all programming language but some uh, some of those might not have the byte, uh, a bit or the decimal data type. So if we represent it by the boxes, so for integers we have byte, short, uh, int, long. For decimal we have float, double, decimal. So small to big, 
so binary uh, is really smaller than integers integers are smaller than uh, decimal but some of those are have the same bit size so but in theoretical concepts so you can have uh, many precisions point in decimal but you can have that in integers so uh, small to big so first above ones are the smallest and the below ones the bigger you can remember that and uh, let's see the data types in depth that how computers understand I try to stay out of this but uh, again I uh, try but turns out that these really impact a programmer very uh, depthly and uh, give them the idea that what should they do to optimize memory so a bit could also be known as bool or boolean so it really varies from uh, language to language so it really represents 0 and 1 1 bit and a byte is represented by 8 bits so what we have said earlier so it means that you have a combination of 8 zeros or 1 so you have a 8 empty places places for 0 and 1 and uh, you could really represent these uh, zero and ones with that uh, uh, binary number so binary numbers are represents like this 2 to the power 1 2 to the power 2 and 2 to the power so on so each place the 2 to the power power will be changed and the number values will be changed so if you have a uh, 1 0 0 1 it means 8 is true and 1 is true it means they both add and give you the value of 9 so with the 1 bit data type you could save up to uh, 255 uh, as I can remember yeah 255 value 0 to 255 so if I say 101 it means the 5 because this one and this one is only true this one and this one so if I say 1 0, 0, 1 so that means 128 plus 1 129 so byte is also known as tiny int so it really depends on what programming language or what database you are using the data type varies but they mean the same thing that we have discussed earlier a character is one byte as we have sh shown earlier it also carries 0 to 255 value so a character actually represents a b c d etc so under the hood it's actually number it represents 0 to 255 numbers so each number have a character assigned to it so whatever you see in the computer is actually the number and it's processed by machine code as we have declared in the previous slides so string or bar chart is known as a fixed length character or immutable so four character if you take four characters hello so it will be uh, 4 into 8 bits so since one character takes uh, 1 byte or 8 bits so 32 bits so if you have 5 characters it will be uh, 5 into 8 so something like that you will have a brief idea that what characters are so string if strings are so int is uh, in most programming language it's 4 bytes modern days but in old days it was 2 bytes so it really depends you could read the manual that what size it is so depending on the size uh, bytes you will have the bits so one byte gives eight bits so here is four so four into eight so we have 32 bits so whatever bit you have you could have the uh, maximum number by two to the power uh, two to the power two to the power uh, bits minus 1 and then minus 1 something like that so you'll have the maximum value what can uh, be represented by these bits so again we have big int or also known as long or long long for some programming language or some programming language said int64 so all are same thing so which represents by 8 bytes you can have a very huge number which is really uh, larger than two uh, uh, which can really hold uh, 
sixty percent of the atom atoms inside the sea, so which is a really huge number. So again, we have quit. So if you can handle a number with long, or if you are using a database and having auto incremented keys, and if you think that you will run out of long data type or int sixty four data type, it would is quit. So quit is represented to have the unique number across time and space so one once a grid is generated it will never be same again so that's why it said that uh, it will be unique across time and space so once a grid is generated it will be never same so it only takes 16 bytes which is very efficient so 128 bits so in very small number you will have a very efficient result so it's also known as unique identifier for uh, databases or some databases UUID. It's really useful for database handling. Uh, and if when we talk about databases, it will be helpful. That's it. So strings, uh, it's actually uh, uh, represented by characters. So list of characters are really series of list of characters are the series of characters to represent text. That's it. So string is more elegant way of saying that it's text and varchar is a synonym of a string and this is a very interesting concept for newbies. Uh, they really suffer for this. So if we have a character data type and if you, if you have a string data type, see that a character could hold a one character only but a string could hold more than one character. So that's the concept. And again, see the quotations. String have double quotes and characters have one quote. So some programming language doesn't care what code you give, but most programming language, they do care. So this is the difference between character and string. Single, string have double quote, character has single quote. That's it. So why? you will encounter the, encounter the data type void. Void means it really doesn't return anything or you are not sure about the data type. That's it. So if you have a function, void function, that means it doesn't return anything. But if you have a function, int function, that means it returns a data type which is in, in integer format. That's it. So array is another uh, interesting uh, data type concept and whatever list you can think of in a computer computer it is either array or linked list we're going to cover both of those but it's not linked list in depth but we'll give you an idea so you might think of array as a list that's it so let's say you have a to-do list and you want to represent it in array or in program programming so you have to use an array so there is no other way to do a deal with it. So arrays are zero basic index and most programming language, most of the lists you get are really zero basic index. That means they start from zero. That's it. Uh, in, in human context, we really start counting from one, but in programming, most of the time you're going to encounter from zero. So it's a zero basic index. That's the first thing about the array and it's fixed length. So first, if I say that uh, eight items in the array, so it will be fixed. You cannot change it later. So that's another concept for the array. So you can change the item values anytime. You could change the to do uh, to do item two to to do three, maybe something like that. Anywhere accessing an array is very fast. You could access any item uh, in constant time. So these uh, four parts are true for all programming languages, but last two parts are true for these red-headed programming languages. So some uh, same type of array contains same type of data, but it is not true for, for all programming language. So you can't add or remove an item uh, anywhere in the array. So it is also true for this programming language because JavaScript handles arrays differently. So you don't have to know more about this. You have to, if you know this far, you are good enough. And 
let's take an example that how we can change the item in array. So if we say that int numbers four, it means uh, the programming language will give you a new array or list of four items. That's it. So maybe f at first the items will be null or no values at all. So let's say that we have defined the values since, since it's a zero base index. That's as you can see that it's starting from zero and start uh, stopped at three. Again, we ask for uh, uh, numbers four. It gives four items, but the last index number is four, three. You have to understand that. So let's say we want to access index two and index three in the list item. So index two will be uh, so index two will be this one. This index two. So in human contact, this is the item number three. So we are accessing index two, which is a third item in the list. So I misspelled. Sorry for my mistake. So if I say index number two, it means the number will have the value of third item in the list. So whatever you uh, say, it is actually plus one in the list. That simple. So uh, if we want to print it, we just say print number. Uh, it really depends on your programming language that what is the print command. And it will uh, print 22 in this case. So if we try to change any item, uh, any index value. So if we say uh, index one, uh, sorry, numbers, uh, curly bra uh, square bracket one equals 33, it will be changed. So previously it was two. So when I say that, it's really raised to 33. That simple. It's really very fast. So some of the problems we have in the array, like we, it's really fixed length. If we want to add a new item, we have to create again the a new array list and copy uh, each item from one area to another, so which is a very complicated thing and very uh, uh, slow thing. So linked list solves those problem. It's really memory based. It's dynamic. It's very fast and it's really advanced topic. We're not going to go through it, but we'll give you some uh, examples that pros and cons. Adding item uh, at, at uh, after or before another item is really very fast and removing any item from after one after or one another is really very uh, fast but in array if you want to remove one item you also have to create the whole array again searching same as array sorting same as array dynamic memory collection so slow why it is slow so retrieving each item in array is very fast, you can do it in constant time, but it really have to go through the whole items in series. So if you have n items and if you want to get the fifth item in array, it will get in a constant time, it will take just a second, but uh, for linked list, it, you have to go through first five items to get to the fifth item. So that's it. So could make memory leaks, which is a very uh, complex topic, we're not going to talk about it, just if you know, that's fine for now. So comments are most important thing for the programmers and newbies tend to uh, escape it. I did it when I learned it, why write uh, programs, but uh, again, when you program for months, let's say one or two months, you'll see that uh, some of the things that you have write previously, you couldn't understand, you have to go through the codes again, but if you just write the comments, you just understand that what you did earlier. Comments does not com compile and does not take part of, uh, does not part in any action in your program. It's just for the developer's convenience and you should write it. And for the comments, you just Google for your programming language syntax, that's it. So developing, I have eight tools for developing. So first, rule one, uh, love what you do. So if you're not happy what you're doing, change it. And if it pleases you, keep doing it. That's it. So rule two is don't give up. So first rule says that love what you do. So again, so you think that programming is fun and you get in programming. You loved it. 
and then uh, after some time you just couldn't handle it then you give up you don't first you loved it so stay with it so that's the concept but uh, when you started you don't like it just escape it don't don't bother doing it so that's the concept so when you're doing something don't give up easily so rule three failing is just fine even with a hundred percent failing rate just move on but make sure you learn from your mistakes if you don't learn from your mistakes you're not gaining anything so your failing is wrong so rule four keep it simple you can do it doesn't mean you should so it's com a complex example so as you can see that it's a Swiss knife it's given all the knives but it's really hard to use uh, they can so they uh, use all the examples of knives inside one uh, toolbox but it's really hard to use it so you can maybe uh, give 10 features to the user but it really doesn't mean that you should you have to analyze the circumstances that what should you give to the users and then uh, you give it to them so you can doesn't mean you should you have to remember that it's a very important rule so uh, Rule 5 says use the best practices. So we haven't done best practices yet, but we'll do it in later sessions. So it means there are some good patterns and object-oriented programming concept, and there are some frameworks to understand. Use those. Don't just try to build up everything of your own. It's really good to understand and learn for newbies, but don't use it in development perspective. Development and learning do a different things and use tooling as much as you can. I have seen many developers uh, that who tries to be a good programmer uh, don't use tooling. Use tooling will save your time. Whatever you're doing in three hours, a tooling could do it in five minutes. But use the tooling after having knowledge. Okay, so all the tools are really very helpful. If you're programming without IDE, uh, you may be using a uh, notepad or any other uh, text editor, use IDE. It will make your development much more faster. So whatever I'm saying, it's re really for development rule. It's not really for uh, SEM rules or learning rules. So it only applies when you develop something, which we'll get to in later sessions. So rule seven, try to be as lazy as possible. Look for easy wins. In my whole life, I was really the laziest person that any of my friends ever know. So, but I turned out to be a good programmer. So I will give you some example, but I will, uh, want to show you uh, one meme picture, so which will may have seen in Facebook. So it's really taken from Facebook. I really don't have the link. So the link says that uh, the image says that uh, Bill Gates is saying Bill Gates is saying that. I will always choose a lazy person to do a difficult job because he will find an easy way to do it. And uh, some random guy who is very lazy uh, calling Microsoft to hire him, something like that. But the concept is wrong. Try to be as lazy as possible is a different concept. It's not like not doing anything at all. So to demonstrate it, I have to give you an example. Uh, many of you are going to encounter PHP and uh, I was hired by a company around 2011 or maybe 10. So uh, I was doing a PHP uh, job. I was a newbie at this point at PHP. So uh, I was sitting there and watching people uh, writing and converting HTML to PHP. It's like writing the same line over and over again. They're just copy pasting and using the quotation marks and PHP echo to print out those syntaxes. So let me give you an example in Notepad. So HTML is something like this. So div code uh, maybe hello world. In PHP, what they are doing is something like this: echo div and copying all the things. I just do it once and bo get bored. I didn't do it uh, any more than that. 
So what I did is I just sit there and relax for an hour and then I just open my favorite programming language and write a program. So let me give you an example of that program. So here is the program that I wrote. I wrote it in two hours and it's not a um, uh, enterprise level uh, application but it really does what it needs to be uh, doing. So let's say I have an HTML input and I really want to uh, see it in uh, PHP. So I just, uh, where should I click? Convert to PHP, that's it. Uh, okay, so convert to PHP, yeah, that's it. So here I'm using uh, array, but it's not really very efficient, but we could change it by settings, but it's the default settings. I haven't used it for m months. So whatever inputs you give, if you have 10 or 20 lines of HTML, just press it. It will uh, convert the PHP, uh, HTML to PHP in a second. So after that, I haven't write any PHP uh, echoes anymore. So again, uh, I have seen that they w tend to change some of the keywords from HTML. So again, I, ha I have used another option called finding and replacing. Let's say I want to replace world and world with maybe uh, hello2 and sorry, my PHP variable maybe uh, bh let's say an example and it is going to be hello too so is it case sensitive let's say it is and set the values and if we convert again as you can see that this time we're going to have a bh variable which is taking a value for hello too and whenever we have a world inside the html it is really replacing the uh, php syntax so it's really very efficient. I did it in two hours and they're doing it for months. So this is the lazy thing. So find the easy win so that you don't have to do the same thing again and again. You have to understand the laziness. It's not like doing nothing. You have to find a way where you do a thing once but really gently or and really hard work, work but did it once. That's it. You never have to do it again. Just do it and the program will do the rest. That's the laziness. So look for the easy wins. So rule number eight, it really breaks all the rules. So try to make things happen no matter how. So in maybe rule five, six, we have tell that you should follow the best practices, use IDEs. But when you are, are in a competition or you have a time frame for projects to submit, the first thing is try to make your thing work. That's the first rule should we have. But again, if you don't love it, there is no need to go through these other rules. So again, uh, the first thing you should do is make things happen. So when the thing is correctly happening, then you could optimize it, use the best practices. And when you learn using the tooling, you should use the tooling. It really makes your work so much faster. So programmer's first language, it's really up to you. So whatever you choose, you must stick with it for two to three years, as I've said in first topics. So uh, for in our future sessions, we're going to mm, take the JavaScript as our first programming language, but uh, whatever we show will equally applicable in other programming languages. And syntaxes are also same like uh, C or C++, but JavaScript is one of the language which does the job differently than any other language. And knowing JavaScript is the power because uh, if you want to talk with millions of people, uh, there is no way to talk with them with uh, C or C++ or maybe in other language. JavaScript is the only language that uh, the compiler is available to all the users in the world. And it's the most accepted, widely accepted programming language. Uh, again, our first language will be JavaScript and after that we will be move on to other languages like C, C Sharp uh, or maybe Java, so on. So we're going to do JavaScript plus jQuery and we are going to go deep into it. 
So problem with this JavaScript or modern languages is, is your development languages that uh, newbies really enjoy, but they learn first, don't give up. But downside is they don't like to learn core programming. So this is a downside, but we could remove it by your enthusiasm. So stick to easy methods. They don't try to have something uh, complicated if that comes to their life. Uh, uh, try to analyze less. So these are the problems that I have encountered with newbies. So conclusion, stay tuned for our next session. Join our group and thank you. Uh, I'm Alim Al-Kareem. Uh, you could reach me at alim.kareem.nsu at gmail.com. You could Google me. I have a blog and uh, you could find our uh, developers organism by uh, fb.com slash developers organism or developers hyphen organism or mail us info at developers organism. Special thanks to uh, Dr. Nova Ahmed. Uh, uh, she was really very helpful and she encouraged me to do this without her maybe this session wouldn't ha ha happen. So all thanks goes to her and uh, thanks to North South University for giving me this opportunity and thank you.